You want big fish on tough days? Trust your Mega 360 to put your boat on the spot so you can make repeated casts. That one just grabbed that drop shot and started screaming with it. Oh, coming up, coming up. Oh, that was airborne. So again, got to the next lake, started with a jig, no bites. Put that drop shot out on some little scattered rock and gravel right next to a drop off and this fish picked it up. I lots of times force those fish to try to take a big bait and a lot of times it works but on a day like this it just was not the ticket. giant bass on a small little drop shot. You can see that hook, it's right in the meat. It's not gonna come off. That fish launched at least twice, and the one time it was three feet out of the water. Tough bite, but little baits put big fish in the boat. So the last two weeks, our fish started gathering up offshore, and the bite was starting to get pretty good. So today I totally expected to come out and hammer deep rock fish on my go-to spark shad and three quarter ounce jig. Well, let's just say after three or four spots and not getting touched on it, I switched gears a little bit and I started throwing the Lyle and then I started throwing a crankbait and I was mixing up a bunch of stuff and I was not getting touched. So I pulled out the finesse rod, something I don't really like to do unless I'm smally fishing Took out my drop shot, a number two and a number four drop shot hook, and I mixed that up between a four and a half inch worm and a three inch haze dong shad, which has been my go-to go lure for all my finesse presentations this year, from giant smallmouth, trophy crappies, and today, big largemouth bass. There's a little weed tuft on the end of this knob of gravel and I was getting rat-a-tatted by the sunfish non-stop. So when I felt this fish, I didn't really put much into it because it didn't feel like anything until I lift it up. And I was on that little three inch haze dong shad. Got this six foot 11 Levante whip snake rod. It's designed for drop shot fishing.
that's what you get. A lot of times I was always scared to use little hooks when I was bass fishing, but you can see these little drop shot hooks, when they get stuck up in their mouth, they are almost always guaranteed to stay stuck until you get them in the bullet. So when the bite's super good, it's easy to get away with making casts that aren't right on the cover or structure you're fishing. But today, having that 360 really shined because it was not a good bite. They wouldn't touch anything but that finesse presentation. And if my bait wasn't right next to those big rocks, I wasn't getting bit. You can waste a lot of time on a tough bite if your bait's not in the right spot. This one felt like a little sunfish when I set the hook. It's hard to take them serious when it's not pulling back. Now all of a sudden it's ripping drag. Gonna launch. These little hooks, you have to have that drag set a little loose so you're gonna pull that hook right out of their mouth. Another quality fish on that little bait. And almost every one is stuck right in that same little fatty spot up on top of their mouth. There. This one here was right where those suspended fish were. Oh, jeeper, that's a dandy fish there. That haze dung shad went shooting off back there. The drop shot has definitely saved the day because they were not touching anything else. drop shot this one here wasn't a hook near as good but when that little hook gets in that tissue and that skin it stays awesome when that little finesse rig puts big fish in the boat <laughs> Right in the same spot. That's three fish in a row, right where that first suspended fish showed up. Definitely a school of them holding out in that area. They definitely mean business once you hook them. Oh, 
That's three casts in a row. Nice quality fish. That's all because that first one showed itself on the electronics. And I could just keep throwing that same cast. Because that spot lock is holding us right in place. Man, we just put that big fish in the boat and decided to cast one more time. And after this one, I might have to do one more cast yet. <laughs> Some of these have been deceiving because they don't feel big right away, but they start getting close to the boat and they start dogging. The last one was head shaking. This one's just pulling straight. So far the quality average fish on this drop shot has been really, really good. Another one where it's buried up there and there is no way that hook is coming free. Okay, we're gonna quick go over what we caught those fish on. And a lot of the stuff you see me focus on is hard bottom, rocks, but not too many rocks. And a lot of them in 12 to 15 foot of water, which seems like it's just the magic zone in our area for fish. When you look at this right here, you got soft bottom, a sliver of hard bottom, sand and gravel. And what's nice is there's a lot of different sizes of rocks and there's big ones, but they're not all next to each other in a big pile of them. I never do good on those kinds of spots. It's these areas where those fish can mill around back and forth, lay against them, hide against them and just kind of roam and when you go over this stuff and you fish it you see a whole bunch of bluegills and minnows suspended on the screen so right there a little spot it's only 85 feet and probably another what 60 feet so 140 feet long but it kicked out multiple big fish get some good electronics learn how to use them put some big fish in the boat <laughs>